हो गए तो महत्व देना ही नहीं Are you all ready? Abhidat, Anuradha, and Sri Vardhana, Niroshi, and where is Abhidat's sister? Okay. Only six people. There should be ten. Okay. Oh, can you hear me? If yes, you can hear me, raise your hand. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Today I am going to speak on right understanding. In the Noble Eightfold Path, number one is right understanding. Noble Eightfold Path is the heart of Buddha's teaching. It is called middle path. So the Buddha taught us the middle path. Middle path means the ex avoiding extremes. Extreme, there are two extremes in spiritual life extreme of indulgence in sensual pleasures and the extreme of self-mortification. Avoiding these two extremes, Buddha taught the middle path. Therefore, the Buddha's teaching in general is known as the middle path. In the middle path, there are eight steps. These eight steps called eightfold path. In the eightfold path, number one is understanding, right understanding. In the Buddha's teaching, understanding comes first, not the faith. <coughs> faith comes later on. Faith comes with understanding. When we understand, then we develop our faith. So, faith is not number one. Understanding is number one. All our problems everywhere arise from not understanding. In, the, in families, between friends, societies, countries and so on and so forth, everywhere problems arise from not understanding. And therefore the Buddha was so wise, he taught us the first thing that we must learn is understanding. It is right understanding in order to avoid misunderstanding or wrong understanding. And therefore, <coughs> we let us speak, let us spend some time on right understanding. What is right understanding? <clears throat> right understanding is the understanding of three things. <clears throat> what are the th three things? 
these are the three things that we do <coughs> every day every day we do these three things <coughs> what are the three things we think we speak and we act these are the three things we do we act speak and think so when we act it is called action right action so uh, first we must understand what is the right action in the in, in the society there are all kind of interpretation of right action it can be political uh, economic business and so on but in the buddha teaching right action is ethical right action ethical only if the action is ethical then we can move in the right direction <coughs> so what is right ethical action there are three <coughs> right actions and three wrong actions let us see what the what are the three wrong actions are <coughs> wrong actions are killing stealing and sensual misconduct killing living beings is wrong action we kill because of our not our not understanding the pain and suffering we inflict on the subject a being we don't understand we think that beings sometimes they kill living beings thinking that they are there for our consumption in some industries living beings they don't call living beings they are they call them a product so they kill without any hesitation but when they kill they inflict so much fear and the pain on the animal so therefore <coughs> that is a misunderstanding and wrong action misunderstanding always lead to wrong action with misunderstanding you cannot do right thing and therefore in the first place we must understand what is wrong action and what is right action what is misunderstanding and what is right understanding then second action ethical ethically second wrong action is stealing taking things not given to ourselves it may belong to somebody some people <coughs> think that they can steal things from the government so the one way of stealing things is cheating income tax cheating in business cheating the boss stealing things from the office when they go home in the evening after work they might take something from the office without the knowledge of the owner of that thing <clears throat> like that there are various ways of stealing that is because of misunderstanding not understanding the danger of stealing 
that is the second wrong action third wrong action is <coughs> sensual misconduct i call it sensual misconduct rather than sexual misconduct sensual misconduct means abusing our senses abusing our eyes ears nose tongue body and mind how we abuse our eyes <coughs> we abuse our eyes especially these days it is very easy for people to abuse their eyes young and old they waste a lot of time in front of uh, uh, tv or even sometimes computer watching and watching and watching until they damage their eyes <coughs> and that is how they abuse their eyes ears we listen to unnecessary harmful things that cause us lot of damage in our psyche psychology psychology in our thinking abusing our ears abusing our nose we abuse our nose by sometimes uh, these days we hear young people go to uh, hardware stores and open paint thinners and then sniff to get high they get magic markers and sniff to get high like that they abuse their nose and also using various type of harmful offensive perfumes some perfumes are so harmful that can cause problem and damage some nerves in our olfactory uh, area that is how we abuse then we abuse our tongue by eating wrong things unhealthy things harmful things things that make us sick make us obese overweight and eat too much greasy things oily things fast food all this we use to use to abuse our tongue then the body sexual misconduct comes under the body abusing the body we abuse the body we it is very common thing that people commit sensual or sexual misconduct and the, the these are the ways how they abuse their senses the what is the right action these are the wrong actions done through misunderstanding what are the right action right action is abstaining from killing instead of killing they help living beings support living beings and they promote their lives they save living beings various animals they save protect uh, in order to respect their lives and by not only protect them 
but they also practice compassion towards them. Uh, that comes, of course, under the mind. This is a physical action, physical action. Abstaining from killing is one thing and promoting life is another. Both are right actions done through right understanding. We value lives, we respect lives and respecting lives is because all living beings are afraid of death. We all know we are born with uh, a defense mechanism, some instinct to flight or fright, to fight or run away. Animals also fight or run away. They fight to for self-defense or they run away from self-defense. We too either fight or run away as self-defense to protect our life. So when we understand this, we respect lives. We don't kill them. That is we, that we do with right understanding. The second right action is uh, not stealing, becoming generous, giving, sharing. We understand that there are millions and millions of human beings. Some of them are under poverty, deprived of all the facilities, pleasure, happiness. They sometimes don't have even one meal a day to eat. We just, not only in third world country, even in this country, we just read in the latest National Geographic, in America there are millions of poor people some of them don't have enough food, clothes, shelter, medicine, and they even cannot send their children to schools because they are very, very poor. It is unthinkable of such people living in this richest country in the world. And therefore, <coughs> sharing sharing with those human beings with understanding is right action. We call it generosity. And there are many animals who need food and supporting them with is right action done with right understanding. Because all living beings survive because of food. All living beings depends on food. And if we can share whatever we can, it's a right action done through right understanding. Then, third right action is not only abstaining from sex, sensual abuse, abusing our senses, but we use our senses rightly, correctly. That means when we use things like computers, television and so forth, use for a purpose, for beneficial uh, reasons, uh, using them is itself is not bad, but learning, under, understanding the limit, how much we use them, 
how much we should not use them. That we can do with underst right understanding. Hearing. We hear what is very important for us, for improving our life, improving our wisdom, improving our understanding. We listen to such things. That is how we use our ears, nose. We use the nose to not only to breathe, but also to understand the nature of uh, uh, smell. For instance, we take uh, beautiful, very fragrant flowers and offer it to the altar, the Buddha, and so forth. We use that uh, with understanding. That is not abusing, that is using correctly. Our tongue we use to use for eating and talking. Eating moderately, right things, healthy things, and we, uh, do, we do this with understanding. Eating for survival, not to be uh, overweight and obese and so on. And then abstaining from sexual misconduct, that is a part of sensual misconduct, sexual misconduct. We learn to respect others' lives, others' principles, others' honor, dignity. If any man is uh, abused, done sexual abuse, he has no respect for women, for children, for others and they don't respect their uh, integrity. Uh, therefore, they become, they, they do this uh, with misunderstanding. One who has understanding, respect people, respect their dignity, respect their modesty, respect their principles, and that we do with right understanding. And these three are called physical, the action that we do with right understanding. Then there are three things, uh, then there are four things we do with mouth, four action, four wrong uh, uh, speech, it's called wrong speech, four wrong speeches. What are they? The wrong speech we do with misunderstanding. What are they? We tell lies and we uh, slander. Uh, then we use harsh words and we gossip. Now, telling lies is sometimes uh, it's, it's very common among some people and some people say, if we want to abstain from telling lies, some would say, come on, tell some white lies. There is no black or white lies. Lies are lies. And we do that with misunderstanding. When we lie, not only nobody trusts us, but we lose our own honor dignity and respect. People try to, they don't trust us. They would say, don't believe him, he is a liar. In society, we are known as liars and we put ourselves down, we lose our honor and dignity through misunderstanding, not understanding the danger and the harm that we cause ourselves by telling lies. Of course, eventually getting into trouble and breaking criminal laws, we may end up in sometimes jails and so on. There are such repercussions in this very life. 
I was not talking about what will happen to us after our death, but I am just focusing only on what can happen to us in this very life. And therefore, misunderstanding or wrong understanding is very harmful with wrong understanding or not understanding we tell lies. Second, we slander. The Pali word is pe sunya. Pe means prayer, friendship. When there are friendly people, somebody would uh, break their friendship uh, by, by slandering, telling things against each other. Uh, suppose you see someone, it's a, it's a malicious talk, which is malicious. The malicious talk always is very stinky, very dirty, uh, very unpleasant. Uh, but one enjoys doing that. It is because of misunderstanding. I don't have to go into detail of malicious talk in the society that also is sometimes very common. Uh, when somebody is jealous of somebody, then he will start all kind of uh, uh, rumors against that person and starts these days there are various ways of uh, uh, sharing such a malicious ideas, malicious talk uh, through email, Facebooks and uh, you know text message and Twitter or whatever. There are various means they not only in writing writing in books and papers uh, and talking, uh, but there are various means of uh, sharing their malicious uh, talks. And then that is the second of wrong speech. A uh, third wrong speech is uh, uh, dirty words, unpleasant speech. Some people are so uh, used, habitually they say something very unpleasant. Uh, when, it, when they drive uh, on the road uh, very fast, uh, seeing even while, while uh, uh, yellow light is on, the person speed up and then right when the person comes very close to the traffic light, light turn red. Then the person immediately curse, use cursing word. In the traffic light, uh, traffic when people moving, uh, in the traffic, traffic always is uh, not very pleasant, very unpleasant. It creates a lot of uh, uh, tension. At that time people use dirty word. At home, with friends, uh, they use dirty word. And this they do because of misunderstanding. And the fourth wrong speech is <coughs> uh, gossip. Uh, gossip, uh, a Pali word for gossip is very uh, good word. You can uh, remember very easily, better than other words. Pali word is sampa palapa. It sounds like bala 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 bala. That's what people like to do very always. Just uh, just mere uh, chatterbox. Uh, keep talking. Mostly unnecessary things. Wasting time. And wasting their time and uh, other people's times. And uh, their uh, working time. And so forth. They... Uh, been, it is also very dangerous because when you do this kind of uh, gossip, of course these days gossip also, society has recognized gossip. There are some papers, they have a gossip column, gossip column. So you write gossip 
and uh, people enjoy uh, reading those gossips. And when we do in our speech, we gossip. People like to listen. But see the amount of time we waste, energy, and eventually we may, if if uh, wrong thing escaped our lips, somebody may pick up and repeat it, and then you get into trouble. And therefore, gossip is uh, also considered to be wrong speech. All this we do because of not understanding the danger of these four types of wrong speech. And uh, what is right speech then? Right speech we do with understanding. When we understand, we, we, we make the distinction between right speech and wrong speech. Because of not understanding, we cannot make the distinction between right and right speech and wrong speech. Just like right action and wrong action. If we understand, we can make the distinction and separate wrong action from right action and follow right action. Then what is the right speech? Right speech is abstaining from telling lies. That means we speak the truth. We speak the truth. Uh, the one who speaks the truth is respected by others. They trust that person and say, you don't hesitate to accept what he says. He speaks the truth. Tell the tell the tell the he tells the truth. And therefore, one who speaks the truth is always have uh, is respected. That person he has a lot of friends. That person can have hold a job, and. Uh, uh, companies, organizations, societies like to hire such person because the person speaks tr the truth. Uh, the person does not uh, uh, lie out of fear, uh, out of uh, desire, uh, out of anger uh, and confusion. When people out of fear, anger, greed and confusion lie. One whose mind is clear, uh, that person uh, will not have uh, uh, fear, greed, uh, and uh, the confusion. Uh, with these things, that person uh, doesn't speak. He is free from them. And therefore, they are called chanda, dosa, bhaya, moha. It's the one who speaks, one who understands this, that person always speaks the truth. And then second is, that person will abstain from uh, 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 slanderous talk, malicious talk, the that person will uh, speak friend, friendly way, cordial way, in, in a uh, way that others who are uh, separated, they try to bring them together by speaking uh, in a friendly way to uh, bring the divided uh, together. They want to unite they are divided. With the good intention they speak, they, 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 they speak. And the third right speech is uh, speaking gently, kindly, with compassion, with love and respect, not harsh speeches. The fourth right speech is not telling, uh, speaking, what you call expressing, uh, useless things, not gossiping. The person would say something always meaningful, beneficial uh, to listeners. 
uh, without uh, using harsh, uh, what do you call, useless words. These are the four kinds of right speech. And we make this right speech because we understand the, the benefit of right speech. And then we spoke right action, right speech, and right uh, thought, right thought. Uh, I, I'm trying to make the distinction between uh, right understanding and wrong understanding. With right understanding, we speak, we act, we speak, and we think. What are the wrong thinking with wrong understanding? And uh, when we have right understanding, we make the distinction between right thinking and wrong thinking. Uh, right thinking is uh, not only something applicable in our worldly material world, but uh, right thinking is more important than anything else in our uh, ethical, moral, spiritual life. Uh, there are three uh, wrong thoughts, that is, they are called intense greed. Greed is called covetousness. Greed for others' belongings, others' property. Uh, one would uh, look at somebody's property with, with jealous, jealous eye, uh, and wish, I wish that for myself. If one sees somebody's expensive car, expensive house, or something like that, the person may have a wish or desire to own that person's vehicle or house or property or something, that is called covetousness. That is a mental state and that is unwholesome karma, unwholesome thing. Uh, we do that with misunderstanding, covetousness, and that always uh, uh, generate unwholesome thought in us. Unwholesome thoughts generates harmful chemistry in our brain and that makes us not happy. We, that makes us very unhappy if we always uh, are uh, covered, uh, we have, have covetousness and uh, keep very jealous I own somebody's uh, property, whatever it is. It can be material, immaterial, human, animal, whatever. We look at the, them with uh, that kind of unhealthy mental state. That is called covetousness. Then the second unwholesome thought is called uh, hatred. Vyapada. Hatred grudge. Uh, with that also we create unwholesome thought, unwholesome, unhealthy uh, thought, and that intense hatred can generate unwholesome, um, uh, harmful hormone in our brain, and that makes our life very unhappy. Sometimes, not always, sometimes such thought, hateful thought, somebody is hating, hating, hating all the time, can even create uh, uh, cancer because it keeps burning within oneself, keep burning, burning, generate always uh, negative, uh, very harmful hormone that can create uh, uh, even uh, cancer. So that makes the person unhealthy, painful. That's why it is called 
harmful thought, harmful uh, not only to oneself, it is harmful to others because one who has hatred in the mind does not behave in a friendly way. One who is full of hatred always creates tr- troubles uh, to the family members, uh, neighbors, uh, the country, uh, other, uh, other people of different uh, appearance, uh, different skin color, different achievement, different country and so forth. They, this is a very unhealthy, very, very uh, painful, harmful mental state. Therefore, it is, it is called unwholesome mental state. That is done because of not understanding, not understanding. And third mental come, mental state is called misunderstanding or wrong views. Wrong views are much more dangerous than anything else. Wrong views are more dangerous than anything else. The wrong views uh, can hurt uh, not only oneself, that can hurt other people, that can uh, poison other people's minds. Uh, Hatred can poison other people's minds and uh, wrong views can poison other people's minds. When uh, it is just like uh, uh, catching a snake by its tail. When you want to get poison from a snake, if you catch the snake by tail, the snake turn around and bite you and cause you harm or you are dead. But misunderstanding is even more dangerous than that. Uh, wrong views, wrong views, more dangerous than that. Wrong views not only hurt you, uh, when the snake bites, only you, the one who was bitten by the snake, will suffer in this life. But wrong views not only hurt you, cause you harm, but it can cause uh, harm and pain on others and uh, poison their minds. And once you implant wrong views in somebody's mind, that person implants that in somebody else's mind, this is much more dangerous than COVID-19, much more dangerous than any virus. It can spread all over the world and can cause suffering to millions and millions of beings. Uh, And then not only in this life, even after death, this wrong views can produce harmful results. And therefore, all these are considered to be wrong uh, things uh, done with misunderstanding. Then what is the right view? Right view. So our topic is right view or right understanding. I broke it into these categories in order to make what right understanding is, to, un- to, to show you what right understanding is. Right understanding is, again, the first one is, first one, first wrong understanding is, uh, wrong view is covetousness. What is the right view? Just the opposite of it. It is called generosity. 
sharing, letting others share what we have. That's a view. Alobha is called not non greed. Non greed is wholesome mental state, wholesome karma. Why it is called wholesome? Because it produces wholesome results. It always produces uh, peace, happiness, comfort, and uh, gives us uh, joy. And therefore, uh, sharing is non greed or generosity. Uh, is done with right understanding. If we understand the benefit of sharing, Buddha said, Buddha said, if people understand the benefit of sharing, they would not eat even one meal a day, with, uh, even one meal without sharing their meal with others. Uh, because he knew the benefit of sharing. So that is one right view. Uh, that is non-greed, non-covetousness or generosity. Second right view is uh, uh, is uh, uh, metta, non-hatred. Non-hatred is uh, not only not hating, abstaining from hating, but also generate metta, loving friendliness. Friends, loving friendliness is very so powerful that uh, uh, we can f be very, very peaceful, very happy, very uh, relaxed uh, when we practice metta, loving friendliness. We become friendly with everybody. When we can, when we practice metta, uh, we can sleep well, we can get up well. In between sleep and getting up, we don't get, we don't, we won't get uh, nightmares. Uh, then we will be pleasing to others. We will be pleasing to uh, non-human beings. Uh, we will be uh, pleasing to divine beings. Uh, they will be happy with us. Animals will be very uh, relaxed and comfortable with us. And uh, when we want to meditate, we gain concentration better. And uh, even after that we will be reborn in higher realm of existence. So, second right view is metta, practicing metta, loving friendliness. Then, the third right view is uh, right view itself, samaditti. And samaditti uh, is right understanding, correct understanding. When we have right understanding, all I explained is the expansion of right understanding in these uh, six categories. Three unwholesome, three wholesome. When we understand the distinction between these two, we always choose right uh, view. Uh, we always try to make right understanding. When we have right understanding, all our life, all our life will be very happy and peaceful. So, then what are the root of wrong, uh, uh, wrong action and what are the root of right action? Now, I said uh, there are 10 unwholesome actions and 10 wholesome actions. What are the 10 unwholesome wrong actions? Four, uh, 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 three in our action. I said we do three things 
every day we act we speak we think what is the wrong act is called action wrong action the root of wrong action wrong speech wrong uh, view is greed hatred and delusion the root of right action right speech right uh, thought is non greed non hatred non delusion these are the roots so understanding these as they are is called right understanding one is part of right understanding understanding extremes and avoiding an extreme and then understanding the uh, ten type of unwholesome actions and ten types of wholesome action ten unwholesome are once again i want to uh, sum up uh, ten unwholesome three physical killing stealing sensual misconduct four verbal lying slanderous talk harsh speech and gossip and three mental covetousness hatred and wrong views what are the right or wholesome ten actions called kamas uh abstaining from killing stealing sensual misconduct and practicing uh, uh non killing that is uh, uh, helping others to live respecting others life uh, then uh, don't stealing and letting people have whatever they have get take whatever you are uh, you are given and then uh, uh, not committing sensual misconduct that means respecting others honor dignity and uh, principles then uh, right uh, speech is abstaining from telling lies abstaining from uh, slender stock abstaining from uh, harsh speech and abstaining from gossip and then uh, three mental wholesome actions are uh, non greed general generosity non hatred practice in metta and uh, n- n- right view is correct understanding so these are the two categories of wholesome and unwholesome understanding this and their roots all unwholesome actions speech views arise from greed hatred and delusion all wholesome actions speech and view arise from non greed non hatred non delusion understanding this itself is absolutely necessary to follow the noble eightfold path in the noble eightfold path i spoke only the first one right understanding there are other aspect of right understanding as well but today i think this must be enough and uh, Uh, if i have time or if you send me a question some other time i can give you more details of right understanding okay now i want to end this session and i hope uh, uh, you learn something uh from this short speech particularly what is right understanding 
we always talk about right understanding and we must know what it means okay all right bye <laughs>